this chapter, we will be introducing and studying derivatives. In this lesson, we will be introducing the product rule. All right. Hi, everybody. Now, in this lesson, we're going to take a look at the product rule. Okay. Now, what the product rule says is that if you've got f and g, and they're both differentiable, so individually you could take the derivative of them quite straightforward, okay, then you should also be able to take the derivative of their product. And the derivative of their product is going to be equal to, now here's where this gets a little bit interesting here, but actually it's a nice little pattern here. You take the derivative of one function, multiply it by the original second function, and then you're going to add to it the, uh, the, the first function there multiplied by the derivative of the other. Now, if there are more than just two functions multiplied together, basically what the product rule says is you're going to take the derivative of one of those individual functions at a time and multiply by whatever's left. Okay? So each function in the product gets its own turn having its derivative taken. Okay? And I'm going to walk you through a, a proof of this. Okay, we're just going to take a Okay, so now we're going to prove the product rule, and we're going to do that, okay, whoops, we're going to do that by first looking at uh, the function here, y equals f of x multiplied by g of x. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a strategy that you're, you would see at a university, okay? You'd see something like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to first of all let u equal to the function f of x and v equal the function g of x. Now this is really just going to be for, for simplicity as we move through our proof here, but it does help. Okay? It might seem like it's an unnecessarily step, but it does actually make a difference. Okay, so now what's going to happen, okay, so now when we change x by a little bit, okay, say x plus delta x, this causes okay, a change in all the other variables. Now, what I mean by that is u, okay, is going to become u plus some delta u. V will become v plus some delta v, which ultimately, okay, because, bear in mind that since y is equal to f of x times g of x, that means y is going to equal u times v. So ultimately, that's going to lead to a change in y, y plus delta y. Okay? And now that makes perfect sense. A little bit of a change in the x-coordinate is going to cause a little bit of a change in the y-coordinate. So now we can look at it like this. So y was equal to u times v. So now I'm going to get y plus delta y is going to equal u plus delta u multiplied by v plus delta v. So what's happened here is we have, we have caused a change in the x-coordinate, some, some microscopic little change. And what we're going to do is take a look at how that change affects the function as a whole here. Now, a couple things I can do. First of all, I know that y is equal to uv. So I can make that substitution. And then over on the right-hand side, I can just actually start expanding this out. There's just two binomials multiplied together. So uv plus u delta v plus v delta u plus delta u delta v. Now, right away, I see the uv on this side, the uv on this side, and so those are going to disappear. And what I'm left with will be delta y is equal to u delta v plus v delta u plus delta u delta v. Okay, now, I'm, I'm pretty close here. Remember that uh, a derivative is just a, a slope calculation when we, when we let the, the change in x get really, really small. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now introduce... Uh, the form of a derivative here by dividing every term here by delta x. And I can do that as long as I do it to everything. So this is going to be delta y over delta x. So it's the left-hand side. And this will be u. And just for simplicity's sake, you're going to see this as u multiplied by delta v delta x plus v delta u delta x plus 
Now here's the here's the weird one. Delta U delta V over delta X. Now the reason I say this is weird is because this is clearly going to become the derivative of Y with respect to X. This is clearly going to become the derivative of V with respect to X. This will clearly become the derivative of U with respect to X. Now, <clears throat> what is going on here? That is a little bit harder to figure out. Now, I don't claim to be the, the genius who figured out that you could do it like this, but I do appreciate the genius in this. What I can do with this, though, with this term right here, is I can actually introduce a delta X divided by a delta X. Now, what has that done for me? Well, delta Y over delta X, this is going to be equal to U delta V delta X plus V. Whoops. Sorry, that does not look like a plus sign there. My handwriting is bad at the best of times, but that was really bad. V delta U over delta X. And this is going to become, and this is kind of neat. I'm just going to shuffle these things over. This is delta U delta X multiplied by delta V delta X delta X. All right. Now we're going to let delta X go to zero. And what that'll do is that it's going to create a derivative. If you think back to our definitions of derivative, that's exactly what we did. That's the first one we started with. And what that's going to do is that's going to make this Y primed will equal U multiplied by V primed plus V multiplied by U primed, which think back, that's what, we, that's what the, the product rule is. You take the derivative of one function at a time and then add up all those, those pieces there. But look what happens over here. Okay, this is what's really neat about this. This is the derivative of u, this is the derivative of v, but then we're going to let delta x go to zero, which means this whole term basically just goes to zero, and that's what we're left with. And that right there is the product rule. Okay, so now we're going to apply the product rule, and we're going to find the derivatives of, of these two functions here. Now, just to show you how the product rule works, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to expand this out, take the derivative bit by bit, then I'll do the product rule just to illustrate how it works here. So to start off with, we've got 3x plus 4, we're going to multiply by 2x squared plus 1. Oops. So now let's expand that out first, and I'm going to get 6x cubed, uh, what do we got here, plus 3x plus 8x squared plus 8 Okay, so now let's just reorganize that so it's a little prettier here. All right, and so now my derivative would be 18x squared plus 16x plus 3. Okay, good. So I can expand that out and take that term by term. Or what I can do here when I take my derivative going back, okay, thinking back to my original function up here, I'm going to take the derivative of one function at a time. So the derivative of 3x plus 4 is just 3, and I multiply that by the other function in my, in my original function there, okay, the other piece, plus I will take now and take the derivative of the second function here, which in that case is going to be 4x, and I will multiply that by the other function. So again, each each factor here gets its turn having its derivative taken. Now, if we expand that out here, I'm going to get 6x squared plus 3 plus 12x squared oops, plus 16. And putting that all together, there it is, 18x squared plus 16, oh sorry, that should have been 16x up there, forgot the x, plus 3. And it's exactly the same. Okay, now let's take a look at that second example, and we'll do the exact same thing. So first of all, I'll write this out. So 2 minus the square root of x, 3x plus root x. Uh, one of the reasons I'm going through this particular example here, ah, I'm going to clean that up, is uh, just an opportunity to talk about uh, radicals again. So the first thing I want to do here is expand this out. So 2 times 3x will give me my 6x. 2 times root x will simply be 2 root x. Negative root x times 3x will be negative 3x root x. And then 
negative root x multiplied by x, okay, or sorry, root x is going to be negative x. And then I can simplify that a little bit. 6x minus x is 5x. But the remaining pieces here are not like terms, and so I can't put those together. What I might do, though, because, uh, because I'm trying to illustrate the, how the product rule works, at this moment in time, I don't actually want to use the product rule. I, I, I want to get there, so I'm going to do this a different way here. I'm going to put the two x's here together, okay, that x and that x together. This is x to the 1, remember, and this would be like x to the 1 half. And so when I multiply those together, that's the same as x to the 3 halves. And so now I might take the derivative and I would get 5 plus, now remember, this is like 2 x to the 1 half, so this will be 2 1 half x to the negative 1 half. And then over here, this will be minus 9 halves when I bring down the exponent, x to the 1 half. All right, so now this is going to become uh, 5 minus, now I'm going to change the order here just a little bit because I've got that negative exponent there, so it'll be 9 halves x to the 1 half. Uh, notice here in this term, the 2 and the 1 half are going to just cancel each other out there. And I will be left with plus 1 over x to the 1 half. Okay? And this can be rewritten as uh, 5 minus uh, 9 over 2 root x uh, plus 1 over root x. And we could rationalize that if, if we wanted to, but that's that's probably okay for right now. Or, or we could just go back up to here, and now what we'll do is we'll take the derivative using the product rule. So remember, in this case here, what we do is we take the derivative of that first term first, and so that's going to get us, we have a negative uh, root x there, which is going to be negative x to the 1 half. So it'll be negative 1 half x to the negative 1 half. And that will be multiplied by 3x plus the square root of x. Whoops. Anyway. Then we add to that, that first term, 2 minus root x, 2 minus the square root of x. And we're going to multiply that by the derivative of that second term, and the derivative of 3x will be 3 plus, and then this will end up being 1 half x to the negative 1 half. Okay, good. Now, that doesn't exactly look like uh, the result from our, our previous question here, so we're going to expand things out a little bit. So negative 1 half x to the negative 1 half. Uh, okay, we've got an, an x here to the 1 here, so this is going to be negative 3 over 2. Uh, that is going to leave us with an x to the positive 1 half. Uh, when I multiply negative 1 half x to the negative 1 half by root x, actually the x factors there are going to cancel. So we're going to be left with negative 1 half. And then over here, 2 times 3 is going to be 6. Uh, 2 times 1 half x to the negative 1 half is going to be x to the negative 1 half. The, the factors of 2 will cancel. Negative root x times 3 will be negative 3 root x. And then negative root x times uh, 1 half x to the negative 1 half. Again, the x factors there are going to cancel. We're going to end up with minus 1 half. Now, putting this all together, let's take a look at what we've got here. We have got 6 and 2 negative 1 half terms. Put those together. That's going to give us our 5. Okay? Then we've got, uh, what else we got here? We have got... Um, negative 3 halves x to the 1 half. And really, over here, we've got this, this negative 3 root x, which is also x to the 1 half. So putting those two terms together, really what we're going to do here is negative 3 halves uh, minus 3. So this is going to be the same as negative 6 halves. Sorry, over here, this will be the neg negative 6 halves. Together, that'll be negative 9 halves uh, root x. Oh, I don't know why that didn't want to print there. I mean, negative root, uh, 9 halves root x. And then finally, we're left with this x to the negative one, uh, one half, which is just going to be 1 over root x. And if you look at that, we get exactly the same thing that we got doing it this way. It's just that this particular method here is a fair bit quicker. Okay, And so that's the power of the, the, the product rule here. Again, in a situation like what we had right here, you might find it even a little bit more convenient just to do what we did up here. 
And that's that's true, but you're going to see as we go along here that as these functions get a little bit more complicated, that this method down here will actually be the, the faster, more efficient method. And I hope that makes sense.